We are in a cold civil war. We are in a cold civil war. Since the shootings in El Paso and Dayton, the Democrat Party and their cohorts in the media have escalated this cold civil war in an attempt to apparently turn it into a hot civil war. While on one hand they're talking about healing and bringing people together, on the other hand they're demonizing half the country as white supremacist terrorists under the command of dictator Trump. We'll tackle all of these lies and more, but first let me give a quick shout out to Daniel Malice. A fellow live leaker, Daniel Malice focuses on calling out Democrat lies and combating political correctness. I checked out a few of his videos and if you like my content, you'll certainly enjoy his. Head on over there and give him a sub. If you would like me to give your YouTube channel or website a shout out, simply make a purchase at ribt.com forward slash drone tech and use the promo code drone tech send me a proof of purchase and i'll give you a shout out you can also send me a donation on paypal of 30 dollars or more thank you for days they were blaming donald trump for the shooting in dayton until it turned out that he was an elizabeth warren supporting antifa loving left winger so of course cnn has to do damage control and downplay politics in that shooting how convenient that particular account does contain uh, both anti-police and pro-antifa posts as well as extreme left-wing uh, either posts or, or retweets. However, we should point out uh, that police have not uh, uh, acknowledged that investigators are really reluctant to, to, to assume that anything from at least 10 years ago uh, would have played a role potentially in this investigation here, or at least played a role as a possible motive here. At least they haven't found anything that would point to this as being either racially or politically motivated, which would obviously be a very significant difference from what's happening right now about 50 miles away. Bernie didn't get blamed for the congressional shooting. Elizabeth Warren didn't get blamed for the Dayton shooting. Islam wasn't to blame for the Pulse nightclub or any other terrorist attacks in the U.S. And Obama wasn't blamed for all the terrorist attacks on police officers that occurred under his administration. But of course, double standards are at play when we're dealing with Republicans. One example of this insanity came from the hate-filled Never Trumper Nicole Wallace over at MSNBC when she made the completely outrageous claim that Donald Trump wants to exterminate Latinos. His much as I deal with media misinformation and lies, even this blew my mind. She made these dangerous claims during an interview with another fake journalist, Raul Reyes, who writes for the USA Today newspaper. Both of these demagogues bolstered their fear mongering by trotting out the debunked lie that Trump called immigrants an infestation, when a simple Google search will show you that Donald Trump was talking specifically about MS-13 gangs. Who would describe gangs as anything other than an infestation? Then he ramped Fresh it up again yeah. to the invasion, the warning people of the caravan, and words like infestation. What do you do with an infestation? With an infestation, the natural lot, the conclusion is to attempt an extermination. You now have a president, as you said, talking about exterminating right. Latinos. What were they thinking? If you convince people that the president of the United States literally wants to exterminate people within the country, what's to stop any citizen from taking up arms or targeting the president or his supporters? Any nutcase out there who's been filled with hate for Trump or his supporters will feel completely justified in taking violent action. Since this was broadcasted, Wallace has walked it back saying, quote, I misspoke about Trump calling for extermination of Latinos. My mistake was unintentional right and i'm sorry trump's constant assault on people of color and his use of the word invasion to describe the flow of immigrants is intentional and constant she can't even apologize without spewing lies there is no constant assault on people of color by donald trump yeah he criticizes brown and black people in the exact same way that he criticizes white people apparently trump doesn't hold back based on someone's skin color and actually treats people equally in the eyes of the left the democrats and the propaganda media apparently brown and black people are above criticism. So what's the evidence of these claims? Yes, Trump has used the word invasion to describe what's happening at the southern border and he would be completely right. The definition of invasion is quote, an instance of invading a country or region with an armed force. Well, it's not that, but it is an incursion by a large number of people or things into a place or sphere of activity or an unwelcome intrusion into another's domain. Millions of people flooding across our border illegally for years on end can 
only be described as an invasion. There's nothing about that word that inherently inspires violent actions. If it were, there would certainly be a lot more violence. Millions of us see it for what it is, a stark description of the reality of the situation that we're in right now. Something that our media purposely ignores in favor of political propaganda for the Democrat party. The use of the word invasion to describe what's happening at the southern border is nothing new. For example, California representative Elton Gallagher once described it as an invasion during a speech on immigration reform in 1995, which is when Bill Clinton was president. He said, quote, for many years, many of us in California, Texas, and other states that have been disproportionately impacted by illegal immigration have been walking through the halls and through this body ringing alarm bells. We have been urging this Congress to wake up to the fact that our country is, in effect, under a full-scale invasion by those that have no legal right to be here, yet who come by the thousands every day and consume precious social benefits that are denied every day to legal residents who are truly entitled to those benefits. In November of 1994, California voters approved Proposition 187, which requires publicly funded health care facilities to deny care to illegal immigrants and to report them to a government officials. Supporters at the time argued that, quote, an invasion of illegal aliens is bankrupting California and that free health care and education are magnets attracting illegal immigrants. Or how about in 1995 when the U.S. Border Patrol conducted tests on how to deal with an influx of illegal immigration, which it described as an invasion. It was described that way by Dutch Steenbacker, who was an assistant chief Border Patrol agent under the Clinton administration. Ironically, at the time, Mexico's undersecretary disapproved of these tests, saying, quote, conditions in Mexico with all of its problems are stable. So I view an invasion of thousands of Mexicans across the border to be, as you Americans say, far-fetched. Of course, we know differently now, since thousands of illegal immigrants flooding across our border has become commonplace, and that the term invasion was accurate. Another fake media narrative busted. At the same time that Wallace is accusing Trump of wanting to exterminate Latinos with absolute lies, we have others at MSNBC straight up calling Trump an existential threat to this country. Again, something that's an existential threat to this country Country must be taken out or fought. MSNBC is giving license to their base to take whatever action they see fit to remove this threat, which would no doubt lead to a civil war. The president's cultivation of racist ideology and his racist definition of what the U.S. is for pose an existential threat to what the country's nature should be. Even if there was no violence, it's still vile. Like, you, it's calling people an invasion, calling them an infestation, like, that language is dehumanizing and unacceptable. If you've watched my videos for a long time now, you know that for years I've been saying that the left is particularly dangerous because they seem able to rationalize anything. I've always suspected that this would eventually lead to the suppression of political opposition to the left. And eventually a civil war, and both seem to be inching closer and closer. With the Democrats and their media now claiming that anybody who supports Trump is a de facto white supremacist. Well, white issue? voters vote against Donald Trump because he's racist? Sure, yeah. that I'm not a racist. But, and if they can be convinced that even if you are not a racist, if you vote for a racist, it's giving aid yeah. and yeah. comfort. Yeah, quickly, uh, Jason racist. and then Maria. This, despite the fact that Trump has been denouncing white supremacists and white nationalists going back years. No tolerance for anti-Semitism in America or for any form of religious or racial hatred. We are a country that stands united in condemning hate and evil in all of its very ugly forms. We want our country to be a place where every child from every background can grow up free from fear, innocent of hatred, and surrounded by love, opportunity, and hope. Racism is evil, and those who cause violence in its name are criminals and thugs, including the KKK, neo-Nazis, white supremacists, and other hate groups that are repugnant to everything we hold dear as Americans. Those who spread violence in the name of bigotry strike at the very core of America. The vile poison of anti-Semitism or those who spread its venomous creed. With one voice, we must confront this hatred anywhere 
and everywhere it occurred. Besides the Democrats and their media, we now have Hollywood nut jobs stoking the flames and seemingly directing violence towards Republicans by claiming that they're somehow complicit in the actions of a lone violent nut job. Raging moron Stephen King chimed in to accuse Mitch McConnell of being complicit in these shootings without providing a single shred of evidence to back up that claim. Twitter has also allowed a hashtag that has been threatening violence towards Mitch McConnell to trend and all of this during a protest at his house where a woman was threatening to stab him. A CNN contributor, Wajat Ali, actually tweeted out support for the violent threats, saying that it restored his faith in America. Twitter allowed all of this to happen without any bans or deleted posts, and at this moment, the hashtag is still active with many tweets threatening violence against Mitch McConnell. CNN and communist Bill de Blasio have been doing their part to downplay and excuse the violent tweets, saying that if Mitch McConnell doesn't like it, maybe he should just fall into line. He is being called Massacre Mitch right now for a reason. Unless Mitch McConnell likes that phrase, Ma Massacre Mitch, he has got to bring the Senate back and bring this legislation to the floor. Isn't it interesting that all of this is happening after the collapse of the Russian collusion hoax and after the failure of the Mueller hearings? It would seem that Democrats and their media always have another trick in the bag. What we're seeing unfold here is the continuing effort to stigmatize, demonize, and ultimately outlaw all dissent and political opposition to the left. They want one party rule where they can advance their far left political agenda without any debates or pushback. It's a dangerous time where half the country is going to increasingly lose their ability to participate in the Democrat process, which can only lead to one outcome. That's all I have for you today. Please hit that like button, subscribe, and share this video wherever you can. The vast majority of videos that I upload are all demonetized, so I still need your help. If you would like to support this channel, please consider subscribing to me on Patreon or Subscribestar. You can also send me a donation on PayPal. Thank you.